my name is Zakia Rizai. Um, I came to Canada in April 2004. I'm an, a student in York University doing my major in health and society. My name is Yutunde Olani. I'm from Nigeria. I'm currently in my, doing my second degree here at York University. First degree in psychology, second degree in health and society. Um, my name is Colleen Ellis, and I'm a third year student at York. I'm a part of the health and society program. I'm born here, but my parents are Jamaican, and they migrated here back in the 80s. My name is Rianne, and I study psychology here at York. I'm a third year student. I'm from Sudan. Uh, I came here when I was four years old. My name is uh, Victor Martins. I'm currently a third year student here at York University, pursuing a, a double major in the disciplines of sociology and criminology. These issues are something that's very important to me, having both of my parents that immigrated here to Canada. Um, hello, my name is Mariana. I'm uh, originally from Egypt. I'm a third year student at York University. I'm uh, my major in uh, human rights and um, equity studies. What are some of the memories you, you hold of back home? We try to uh, sort of uh, not look at the negative ones, which did uh, involve violence, uh, street harassment for girls when they will go out, um, children being abused. I remember one time there was a bomb explosion, and like my family literally had to just, I was in my underwear. I had to get in the car and we had to run. The Boko Haram issue is still very, very huge in Nigeria, but that does not take away from the fact that I'm Nigerian and I'm proud to be Nigerian. And I am hoping that everything will be better in Nigeria. There are good things too, such as like family, friends, and the food, of course. They always talk great things about Port Sudan, which is the city where we're from. Uh, they never told us like no nothing bad ever happened there. They always told us really good stories. We usually still have like positive things to look back on and we still celebrate, right? Because we don't have a choice. We can't just lock ourselves in our rooms and just keep being sad. I believe it's all how you look in a situation. You can just wallow in sorrow and, and focus on right now or you can plan for a better future and hope for the best. Whatever you're going through, still smile, still smile, still smile because that keeps you going, that keeps you sane. It's a beautiful thing to look back just to see the growth, to know where they've started and where they are now. It's, it's just unbelievable. How did it feel to leave your loved ones, your home? It's very hard. It's very, very hard to talk about uh, the bar that you leave behind because I would not want to wish this on anybody, Canadian or Canadian. Is, uh, you feel like you've been uprooted from your roots. It's, it's always hard. It's always hard to leave your family. Being here and um, hearing the news, an explosion took place. Or, um, a girl got raped, or somebody was killed, and it may not even be around their area, but automatically, like, you would just pick up the phone and call them and just uh, make sure that they are okay. That geographical distance causes a lot of strain. What, what are some of the things you'd like to tell others as a, as a migrant or as an immigrant or a refugee? When I see what people go through and I compare it to what we, some, some people go through in Nigeria, I'm just like, you guys are not... You guys are lucky. You still have light, even till light. Sometimes we don't have light for a week. It's harder than they think. It's a lot harder for people to completely uproot their life and come to a different, a different country and um, experience a new culture and new people and new languages. So um, just to be open-minded about how people are experiencing it. Don't take your opportunities for granted. Don't take your family for granted. Don't take your country for granted. Don't take your school for granted. I know that it's, it's increasingly becoming more difficult to be able to say that I'm a Canadian citizen. Um, it's increasingly harder to, to um, gain your papers and, you know, and to uh, become an official citizen, uh, something that's very challenging. And I often think um, if my dad and my mom had maybe applied for citizenship today, who knows if they would have came into the, if they would have been accepted. It took, it took about seven years for us to actually get our citizenship into Canada. And the seven years were the harder seven years of my life because I didn't know if we're gonna be deported tomorrow. I didn't know if it's gonna if they're gonna say no, you're not welcome to Canada. It was really a struggle for us as a whole family, and uh, I'm just very happy. I'm just very happy that I was I was lucky enough to get that opportunity. Many are it, unfortunately. Canada is a land of opportunity. Even the plate number says yours to discover. What all, all York University students have is the opportunity uh, to build a better life for themselves and for the, when their offsprings uh, 
uh, eventually come. There are students that don't have the opportunity of um, getting a second um, post-secondary education and um, for me being here in Canada and being able to get a great post-secondary education is a great opportunity for me. This is one of the, I guess, the advantages of being Canadian is being able to go to a great institution like York University and that's, and that's very serious. I think Canada is a land of opportunities but it's just like every other country has its own faults. I do not stand for Islamophobia. I think it's a great threat. And I think the fact that uh, we'll be talking, for example, with a couple of bunch of friends and they'll talk about how the refugees are coming in and they're coming from ISIL and they're gonna kill us. And I'm like, no, <laughs> like get the facts straight. They're not. These are people are coming. They've been already in camps for a while. They've gone through tremendous amount of security. They've gone through the Interpol. They've gone through the Canadian National Security. They've gone through the CIA security. They've gone through Europe security. Like they've gone, they've been filtered for years. Please give them the opportunity to live like I did. Don't judge them based on their color. Don't judge them based on their religion. Just give them the opportunity. You know, getting to know a different, complete, learn a complete, completely different language is hard. Um, so if they could just make it easier on people in certain ways and um, to be more open-minded, um, to like, lend a helping hand or smile or ask them how they're doing or help them in any way, it makes the experience more easier for them. You know, even like a smile or, you know, a how are you can make a huge difference for someone who, who moves to a new country. Difference is something we should learn from, not something we should try to remodel to have it look more like ourselves. It's important to really embrace uh, all of these differences because that's what makes Canada unique. It's challenging, yes. It's tough, yes. And sometimes I have uncertainties, but at the same time, I'm looking up and I'm putting my head up there and I'm hoping that 